Hey guys, my name is Natalie. I'm one of the physical therapists here at Catalina Island Medical Center. I'm coming to you today from the comfort and safety of my own home to give you an exercise program that you can also do in the comfort and safety of your own home. Uh, so first, I just want to say thank you to the community members and the hospital, everyone in the front lines as well as behind the scenes, keeping that hospital up and running available for us. We thank you as well as the community members. You guys are doing a great job uh, with all of the guidelines, supporting each other. I see people waving from across the street all the time, just trying to spread some fun, some love uh, wherever possible. So let's jump into it today. We're going to talk about resistance training. We're going to talk about the benefits of resistance training, maybe some things you hadn't thought about, or a little refreshers to keep you informed and to remind you of why you're doing this if you're already an avid person incorporating resistance training into your daily and weekly routine. So Resistance training has a lot of benefits. Uh, the ones I'm gonna to mention today is it helps with bone density, building and maintaining bone density. It helps with lean body muscle mass, um, which is great, especially if you're trying to get rid of some of the fat and increase your muscle. Uh, it also helps with metabolism. So metabolism meaning, you know, the amount of energy, the amount of calories you're burning, even when you're done your resistance training workout. Uh, so when you're at rest, enjoying the rest of your afternoon or in bed at night or on the couch, you're still burning more calories having done a resistance training program than if you hadn't. So how does that work? I get this question a lot. How am I burning more calories when I'm resting after the workout? And this is because your body has to go through a restoration process. When you do a resistance training workout, it, it goes to say that the harder the workout, the more uh, breakdown, which is good, that you're gonna have in your body and your muscles, and the more rebuild or restoration your body is gonna have to go through to get you back to that resting state you were at before you did your workout. So we look at this, um, you can measure it scientifically with something called EPOC, which is excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. The amount of oxygen you're using and requiring after a workout or you could just simply also look at that as the amount of energy you're requiring after a workout to do that restoration process so fat does not burn as much uh, energy or calories as muscle muscle is a more metabolically active tissue so with resistance training you're slowly building more of that muscle and with time you're just going to have a, a body a machine that is burning more which is good. So anyway, uh, one study just to mention, just to give you a little bit of uh, scientific, uh, scientificness behind it, is that uh, back in 2018, so just two years ago, they took a group of sedentary women, they had them do a resistance training program, and they found that for up to 48 hours, so for up to two days after they did their resistance training workout, they had an elevated BMR. And a BMR is simply your basal metabolic rate. You could simply just look at that as it's the amount of energy you're burning at rest, well, kind of what we were just talking about. So for up to 48 hours, these women had an increase in energy level, an increase in calorie burn, even after they were done working out. So great examples, just some facts for you guys to keep in mind. Um, I like to just remind everyone, Consistency is key, not perfection. So if this is a bit hard to start, that's fine. Just pick a few. If it's really easy, do the advanced option, up the times. Everyone's starting at a different time, a different period of their lives. And if you go for perfection, that's just an added stress to a workout that you should be enjoying or trying to have fun with. So consistency, not perfection. Eventually you'll get there. Your body will change. Just do something somewhere, sometime each day, and then you can work towards getting to that routine, doing it every day, finding a period where you're more apt to enjoy and get that emotional as well as physical benefit from exercise. Uh, it'll slowly become more fun. Um, so let's jump into it. We're going to show you those four core exercises and give you those modifications and those advanced options as well. So. We're gonna do a side plank to start. A side plank, um, you're gonna have a yoga mat, something on the floor that's tolerable for you, just a little bit of space in your living room, bedroom, wherever you might have it. So for a side plank, you're gonna to wanna to get on your side, you're gonna have your elbow down, your knees also down. You wanna make sure that your butt 
when you push up into that position is forward, not back. So if you're pushing up, but you still kind of are in that bent position, you want to kind of bring your butt forward, straighten your butt out, so that if I drew a line from my ears down to my knees, it'd be pretty straight. Okay? When you do this side plank, you're going to try and hold this position, if you can, for 15 to 30 seconds. Okay? Don't forget, you've got two sides, so you definitely want to go ahead and rotate. For this one, I'm going to show you a slightly uh, different modification. You can put one leg out and keep one knee bent, so instead of two knees down, now in this position, I've only got one knee down, so this is a little harder. And as you can see here, again, my butt's not back. You want to make sure to bring that butt forward from your ear down to my ankle. I've got a relatively straight line. Again, holding that plank position for 15 to 30 seconds, whatever is comfortable for you. You can always do a little bit more if it's feeling good, okay? From the side plank, we're going to go into our second exercise. So our second exercise today is actually one that you've already seen before if you watched Patrick's video last week. Um, this video is a full plank or a modified full plank. Uh, so we're bringing this one in again because we really like planks. If you can't tell if it's in both videos, it's an important one. So for a modified plank, you can use a tabletop. A tabletop of any height if you're limited, but the higher the table, the easier the plank is going to be. The lower the table, a little bit harder, and eventually you might even want to move to the floor. So for our first plank, I'm going to show you just using the tabletop. I'm straightening my body, trying to keep my core relatively tight, and I'm using a tabletop so it's not as hard. You're going to hold that plank for 15 to 30 seconds, and if that's too easy, you can again take to the floor, putting your elbows down. I'm going to keep my knees down, and I'm going to hold this position for a modified plank on the floor for again 15 to 30 seconds. The key here is I'm drawing into my stomach, but I'm not letting my butt push back or elevate. I'm trying to keep my butt down. I'm using my back as a tabletop almost, and I'm just holding that position, trying to breathe 15 to 30 seconds. Okay, so our first exercise, the side plank. Our second exercise, that full plank with modifications. We're going to do a bird dog exercise next. This exercise is great for the core, but also great to kind of get the back and the core working together. So for starters, you're going to be on your hands and knees. Okay, You're going to try not to arch your back and not to create a valley either. You want to be nice and straight, flat like a table, just like the planks we just did. You're going to keep your core tight while raising one leg back. We're going to do just legs for the first modification. When you do this, this might not look like a core exercise, but as I'm doing it, I can feel it already. I'm just moving my legs, but while I do this, my body is moving, and what's going to keep me from moving? My core. It's drawing in, it's keeping me centered, it's keeping me still. You're going to do five to ten of each of these on each leg. If this is too easy, a slight modification would be to increase the difficulty level by adding in your opposite arm. So I'm not rushing these. I'm trying to go nice and slow. Now I've only got two points of contact on the floor. So this one's a little harder, but if you feel a little wobbly, but you're drawing in at your core to prevent any excess motion, then you are doing it right. Okay, so with this one, you would just do five to 10 on each side, okay? so. Each side, if you're counting, it would be one, one, two, two, that type of thing, okay? You can modify your counting if it works better for you to just count each rep, rep then you would be doing maybe 10 to 20, okay? All right, and our last fourth and final exercise we're going to do is called a dead bug. So you're going to be on your back. So with this one, most importantly, again, it's what you do with the core, all right? So before I even start, I'm going to draw my core in, I'm going to brace it, almost like someone were going to take a small bowling ball and drop it on my stomach. What would I do? I would brace tight. I would definitely be prepared for that ball to drop. Another way to test if you're getting it right would be to take your hand and put it under your back. If I'm not bracing my core, I'm going to be able to slide my hand, I'm going to show you on this side, all the way through on the other side. We don't want that. So you want to draw your core in. If I go ahead and try, it's flush with the floor. I can't fit my hand underneath my back. That's good. Draw in. Start with that before we do anything else. Okay? You want to protect your back when you're doing this. So I'm drawing in. I'm going to just start with my legs. 
I'm gonna go ahead and straighten one out, get as close to the floor as I can without touching it, and then bring it back up, and then I'm gonna alternate all the while keeping my core active when I'm doing this. It's creating a lever arm, so I'm having this lever arm with my leg straightening out. My core has to control for that. I can feel it in my lower core. If this is pretty easy, you can modify this slightly, make it a little bit more difficult by doing the opposite arm and leg. So now I'm working a little bit more my upper quadrant and my lower quadrant on the upper side. Okay, so I'll just show you a few here. And again, I'm getting really close, but I'm not touching the floor. I'm making my core work for it all the while, just nice and slow. And again, five to 10 reps on each side, okay? So this would be one, also one on each side. Now I'm moving into my second rep, two, okay? So you guys get the picture. All right, so those are your four modified core exercises. We went through the side plank, the plank, the bird dog exercise, and the dead bug exercise. So you'd run through each of those exercises, uh, 15 to 30 seconds with both of the planks, five to 10 reps on each side with the last two exercises as well. And then you could run through that circuit three, maybe four times if you're up to it. All right, let's move into the last bit of this video, which is gonna be the more advanced version of each of these same four exercises. We're gonna go through each of these one more time, and then you'll have a final count of what you can work on at home, whether it's a beginner or a more advanced version, okay? So for the side planks, you're just gonna do a full side plank. You can stagger your feet or you can stack them. Without shoes, I like to stagger my feet. I'm gonna bring my hip up. Again, nice straight line. You can put your arm up if you want to. You could do just down at the side. You're gonna hold this for again, whatever time works for you. I like to suggest if you're more advanced and you can hold that position, maybe try thinking about starting at 30 seconds and you can go ahead and increase that time depending on your ability. Again, don't forget the other side, you've got to. All right, with the plank, you can do a full plank. You could do a straight arm plank just like this. Hold that for 30, maybe 45 seconds. Modified, not modified, but elbows down, slightly different variation, it'll be a classic plank. Again, try not to have your butt be too high. You wanna draw your butt in so that you're nice and flat, your core is tight, and you're holding that position for again maybe try starting out at 30 seconds if it's pretty easy you could definitely go ahead and up that to 45 maybe even 60 second holds all right last two exercises so for the bird dogs a more advanced version would be to go ahead and do the opposite arm and leg but this time you're going to hold it okay so we're not going to do reps simultaneously back and forth you're going to hold that position for up to 10 seconds when you're doing this, now you're getting a little bit more endurance. Your muscles are maybe burning out a little bit. You're feeling a little wobbly and you have to control for that movement. If this is easy, what you can do in addition to the 10 second hold is maybe then draw little squares. Okay, so now we've got some additional movement while you're doing that 10 second hold. And when you're doing these 10 seconds, 10 times. Okay, so a little bit more of an endurance focus definitely harder than just doing 10 reps. Now you're doing 10 second holds 10 times, okay? Last exercise, we're gonna go back to those dead bugs. A more advanced version of this, again, don't forget, draw in, start strong here, but you're gonna start with your knees, your hips in a 90 degree position, your knees in a 90 degree position, and your arms up when you do this. Now all of a sudden my core is working. I'm not doing anything and my core is already working just by holding this position. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the opposite arm and leg. You're gonna go ahead, slowly go out, hold that cord tight. I'm trying not to let my back pull away from the floor. Now I've got a little bit more advanced version of a dead bug holding this position. Just having this leg up versus down is making this a lot harder. Opposite arm and leg, slowly down, slowly back up, okay? So just a little bit of a variation, and all of a sudden we've got a big difference in what you're feeling in terms of your core. Now there's definitely more variations, more and more advanced uh, with this. If you have a longer foam roller, you could do your dead bugs on a half foam or even a full foam roller. Something like this is a little bit too short. You definitely would need the longer version, something that can go from the small of your back all the way up to also support your head. Some of those longer ones 
um, the more classic foam rollers, that will really get you teetering and tottering while you're trying to do the last exercise, a dead bug, so that'd be very advanced. Um, we didn't do that one on this video because I even struggle with that, but just to give you some ideas. So in summary, again, the more advanced program, same four exercises. You're running through each one once, then you're gonna go back to the top, repeat that circuit three, maybe four times, just so that you're really getting that burn. Feel free to take a little bit of a break in between circuit sets. Um, so you might go through all four exercises, take a 20 second break, maybe a minute, then start that circuit yet again and go through that three or four times. So, hope you guys have fun with this. Please feel free to give it a try. Remember, if something doesn't quite feel right, don't do it, safety first. If you're very beginning, you're very just starting out with these exercises, feel free to talk to your, uh, talk to your doctor before doing anything that might seem a little bit outside of your comfort zone or is just very new to you. But for the average person who's already pretty active, something like this is a great way to focus on your core. We oftentimes will overlook the core, focusing on other muscle groups like your arms or your legs or cardio, for example. But some resistance training for your core, definitely a vital part of a good exercise program. So good luck, be safe, have fun. Thanks for joining.